Okay, lecture two. We're going to talk more about finite cardinalities. What did I say last time does cardinality mean? I said it's a measurement of how many items are in the set, right? I should say elements, not items. How many elements are in the set, right? So you might say you just count how many things are in the set, and that's the cardinality. And that is completely true unless there's infinitely many things in the set. Then it gets a little bit more complicated. And we're going to ignore that complication today. We're only doing finite cardinalities. Okay? So that means you can look at the set and simply count how many things are there. And that would be the cardinality of the set. Okay? So let me do this. We'll just start off really simple. Let's look at that set, okay? And I want to know the cardinality of that. Remember, the symbol we're going to use for cardinality is identical to the absolute value symbols. So I could do that. And what would be the answer? How many things are in that set? I see five. So that's the answer, okay? Another way to do it, just so that you know, is I could have given that set a name and said A equals that and then I could have written the cardinality of A equals 5. Okay? All right, let's go back to the way it was. Now, it's a pretty simple concept, I think, right? Do you agree? But there are some uh, small technicalities that are very, very common for confusing people at first. It's very easy to get past this confusion and then it will probably never confuse you again, okay? But, but probably the first time it will. And all we need to do is just point out the possible confusion and get you past it once and then it'll be fine, okay? Look at this. I'm gonna take a set. Okay, and inside of that set, I'm going to put a set that has, let's say, the numbers one half. My pen's not working. What's going on here? Give me one second. There, that fixed it. Okay, let's say one half and 5 and pi. How about that? So I have a set and inside that set is another set that has three elements. So I ask you this question. What is the cardinality of that? Think about for a second, okay? And I'm going to tell you the answer and you either got it right or you got it wrong. And it's one of these two answers. I know it. And the answer is one. Okay? Some of you said three. And that's perfectly fine to say that. But it's not correct. The answer is one. Okay, let me show you the reason why. I'm going to draw a picture here. Remember the analogy I said in the last lecture, because this analogy will help you on almost every single problem about uh, cardinalities, okay? And that is, what is a set and what are elements? Think of a set as a cardboard box, and the elements are the things that you see when you look into the box, okay? Listen very carefully what I said. I didn't say the elements are the things in the box, although that would be true, but that's not the way I said it, is it? I said the elements are the things that you see when you look into the box, okay? So let's look at the first problem. This, this set right here, okay? So, so what is that? It's a cardboard box.
Okay, and inside that cardboard box are five blocks, like the kind you probably had when you were a kid. One of them's got the number five on it. Here, to save time, this is going to take us all day, so to save time, I'm just going to draw a square, okay? That's a, that's a little block with a five on it. And there's a block in there with a three on it. And there's a seven and an eight and a nine. Okay, so when I open that box and I look inside, How many things do I see when I look down in that box? I see five things, right? And that's why the cardinality was five. Okay? So that one is not ever cause anybody any confusion for the most part. Okay, now let's do the next one. And let's see why that answer is one. So what I have here is I have a big cardboard box Okay, there's a big cardboard box. <clears throat> and I'm asking, how many things do you see in that box? Okay, so what's in that box? In that box is a cardboard box. Let me erase these dashed lines. I think we're going to have too many lines in the picture. Oh, I don't want to go that far. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Okay, inside that box is another cardboard box. You see how I'm making these boxes closed? I'm doing that on purpose. It's like they're taped closed, okay? And inside that little box are three numbers. There's a block with a one half, and a block with a five, and a block with a pi. Okay, now, I open the big box, and I look to see how many things do I see. There it is again, remember? I'm not saying how many things are in there. I'm saying how many things do you see. So, look at that picture. If you look down in that box, how many things would you see? Now, mind you, this is made out of cardboard, not plexiglass. You can't see through the cardboard. So when you look inside that big box, what are you going to see? You're going to see a cardboard box that's closed. I drew it that way on purpose, right? Are you going to see the one half and the five and the pi? No, because they're inside of another box and you can't see through that. You're not Superman or Wonder Woman. Okay, so how many things do you see when you look in there? You see one. And so the cardinality of that set is 1, because that's how many things you see when you look in there. Okay? Now, the cardinality of this set that's inside of the other set, okay, the set inside has a cardinality of 3, because if you opened that little box and looked inside, you would see three things. So the cardinality of the little set is 3, and then that little set is inside of the bigger set. And that little set is the only thing in the big set. So the cardinality of the big set is 1. Okay? I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, you can ask me during one of the discussions. But usually the box analogy um, is something that will help you through any difficulty of cardinality, as long as there's not infinitely many elements. 
okay? All right, let me erase that picture. So let's just do a few more now. What if I did something like this? Here's a set that has inside of it the number 10 and a flower. and a set containing the numbers one and two, and that's all. What is the cardinality of that set? You have it? The answer is three. I would see three things when I peer down into that box. I would see a number 10, I would see a flower, and I would see another box. Here's the other box right there. Well, here, let me do it like this. So um, so there's the number 10 that I would see. And I would see a flower. And I would see another box. So I see three things. I don't see the one and the two when I look inside the big set. Because the one and the two are inside of something else. Okay? It's not that hard, right? It's pretty straightforward. All right. Let's talk about the empty set. Do you remember what that is? It's exactly what the name says. It's an empty set. What's the cardinality of that? That's not a trick question. It's zero. The cardinality of the empty set is zero because you don't see anything in it because so there is nothing in it okay but don't get that confused with this oh i see i erased that too from that earlier problem there we go don't get that confused with this here's a problem that um we like to ask that it's always confuses people the very first time but then again as soon as you see oh i understand now the mistake then it'll never bother you again Okay, so um, because I scrolled off of the screen, I'm going to just write again here. This is what the empty set is. And the cardinality is zero. Okay, now look at this set. Is there anything in that set? And if so, or if not, what's the cardinality of that set? Think about it. Now again, there's only two answers that anybody ever says for this. And one of them's right and the other one's wrong. Okay? Here's the correct answer. Let me, up here, let me write the cardinality of the empty set for you. The cardinality of the empty set is zero. Okay? The cardinality of this set is 1, because there's something in there. You know what's in that set? The empty set is in that set. It wouldn't make sense, would it, if I did this? I'm going to take an empty box. That's the empty set. There's nothing in there. That's the empty set, and its cardinality is 0. Okay, and that's why we get that up there. Okay, but now, what does this say? It says, it doesn't say the empty set, that's what's important. It says a set with the empty set inside of it. So, my claim is that that set's not empty. So let's take that empty box that I drew down there. And now I'm going to put that empty box inside of a bigger box. Tape it shut. Okay, and then I'm going to ask you to open that box and see if there's anything in it. So let's open that box. Okay. 
Okay. And let's say you look inside. Is there anything in there? You see, if you said, no, this big box is empty, then I would say, oh, you better go to your optometrist. Because when I look in that box, I very clearly see that there's something in there, isn't there? This box is inside there. So you can't say that the cardinality of this set is zero because that set's not empty. The cardinality of this set is zero. That's the empty set. Okay? But this set is not the empty set. That set has one thing inside of it. So the cardinality of that set is 1. Okay, you see how that works? It's not confusing. It's just that almost everybody will say the wrong answer first, but then as soon as they realize, then, then they got it straight. It's not the sort of thing that keeps causing problems over and over again. Okay, let's do one. Just a final practice on this. Let me write a set that has inside of it, um, let's say, one. And the set containing two and three. And the set containing four. And the set containing five and the empty set inside of there. OK? So let me, I'm going to ask you several questions about this, OK? There's a set right there, the empty set. What's the cardinality of that? It's 0, right? Cardinality of the empty set is 0, OK? Now, let me ask you a new question. Here's another set. What's the cardinality of that? Okay, I hope you say it's 2 because that's correct. That set has a 5 and the empty set, or the elements. Okay? So that cardinality is 2. Now, here's a bigger set. What's the cardinality of that? Careful. Don't be too quick to answer. Look at it carefully. You know how many things I see in there? I see a four, that's one thing. And I also see this set. I see two things in there. Not three, just two. Because when I look in this set that I've underlined in red here, when I look in that, I don't see that five and that empty set because they're inside of a smaller box. I can't see through the cardboard of that smaller box. Okay, do you see what I'm saying? All right, let's move over. Here's another set here. That one's a little bit easier. What's the cardinality of that? That's two. Is that a set? No, that's not a set, is it? There's no curly brackets. All right, now, final question, and this is the big one. What's the cardinality of that set here? Well, let's see. How many things do we see? Let's count them. I'll circle them in purple. There's one thing that I see. Here's another. And here's another. How many things do I see? I see three. The cardinality is three. By the way, uh, you might notice this. Look, you can also use the commas to help you uh, count that. There's two commas, so that means how many things are being separated? Three things. And why would I not count this comma? Because that belongs to these brackets. You see? 
So that's not a comma for the big set, that's a comma for that smaller set. You see what I'm saying? Same thing here, I wouldn't count this comma because it belongs inside of these brackets, so that's for that smaller set. And I wouldn't count this comma because that is for this set. The only commas for the big set are the ones I circled in red. And there's two of them. Two commas means three elements. Okay? All right, now I just want to do a little bit of practice with set builder notation. We went over that in lecture one. What if I, what if I wrote this? The set of all x in the integers such that x, sorry, x squared is between 10 and 100. And the question I want to ask is, what's the cardinality of that set? Okay, so I'll give you some advice. How about if we just rewrite that set by listing the elements because I don't think there's going to be all that many. So that set would really just be what? Let's see. 2 squared is 4, so that's not going to be in there. Um, 3 squared is 9, so that's not going to be in there. 4 squared is 16, that'll be in there. 5 squared is 25. That's between 10 and 100. What else will be in there? 6 will be in there because 6 squared is 36. 7 and 8 and 9 will be in there. But 10 won't be there because 10 squared is not less than 100. So that's the whole set right there. And we are being asked for the cardinality of that set. So it's actually a very easy question when you write it that way. And the answer is 6, isn't it? Okay, so that's cardinality for finite sets. It's a counting problem. There's not a lot of really advanced mathematics involved here. It's just a matter of understanding how to count things that you see inside of a box and, you know, especially just getting over that hurdle of sets inside of sets and how that is treated uh, when you're trying to find the cardinality. Okay? So that's all for today. It's a short lecture today. Okay? And next time, we're going to move on and we're going to do something called the Cartesian product. Sounds a little bit more technical, but it's not going to be that hard, I don't think. Um, you actually, to be honest with you, you are very, very familiar with Cartesian product already. You just have possibly not been used to using that name, but you actually already know what it means. All right, that's for next time. So if you have any questions about this, come to the Zoom discussion and ask the question, and I'll be happy to help you through it again.